When people today think of Viking architecture, the first images that usually come to mind are longships, carved dragon heads, and windswept settlements along cold northern coasts. But, you know, the real engineering genius of Viking life wasn't found on the ocean. It was found in how they built homes that stayed habitable through long, brutal winters where temperatures dropped low enough to freeze livestock water solid by morning. These structures weren't crude log piles or temporary shelters. They were meticulously engineered, climate-adapted homes that used insulation methods so effective that versions of them persisted through Scandinavia's medieval period and beyond. And what's most surprising is that these methods still outperform many modern off-grid cabin builds because they solve the problem from the ground up, stabilizing temperature, controlling airflow, reducing heat loss, and managing moisture naturally. By the end of this guide, you'll not only understand how Viking insulation worked, but how to apply these principles in your own workshop, homestead, or outdoor builds using readily available materials. Viking insulation begins with controlling the earth wall relationship rather than fighting cold air directly. Viking houses were earth anchored structures meaning the building wasn't just sitting on the ground, it was fused to it. The earth walls acted as massive thermal batteries, absorbing heat during cooking, fires, and daytime warmth, then releasing it slowly through the night. Modern physics confirms that soil, when dry, has stable thermal mass and doesn't rapidly lose temperature the way exposed walls do. To apply this principle today, you can build a Burmed workshop or partially sunk storage space by covering exterior walls with compacted soil or even rock-laden earth banks. The goal isn't to bury the structure completely, but to give the lower half of the wall a protective layer that evens out the temperature swing between day and night. You know, even applying earth berms just halfway up a wall can significantly reduce heating needs in winter and cooling requirements in summer. The roof carried most of the insulation workload, and, well, Vikings treated it as a living system. One of the most misunderstood Viking techniques is the sod roof. It wasn't simply dirt thrown on top of planks. So, the system had layers. First, a waterproof membrane, usually birch bark, and then a thick sod layer with roots, soil, and, well, natural grass. This created an insulating mass that locked in heat while still allowing moisture to escape upward. Birch bark was, honestly, the secret. It doesn't rot easily, repels water naturally, and, interestingly enough, flexes with seasonal movement. For a modern variation, you can uh, replicate the functional design without copying the historical materials exactly. Start by laying a waterproof but vapor-permeable membrane over a roof deck, making sure it can tolerate low-angle slopes. Then, add a protective layer that diffuses pressure, like woven mats, and after that, place a thick layer of soil mixed with grass or hardy ground cover. Even a simplified sod roof provides, you know, powerful insulation, sound reduction, and natural cooling, all with minimal maintenance. Internal insulation was achieved through, um, layered interior surfaces, not stuffed cavities. So, this is where Viking insulation, well, really goes against the grain of our modern mindset. Rather than just stuffing the walls with a single insulating material, the Vikings actually layered surfaces, creating multiple thin pockets that trapped air. This clever design slowed down heat movement, all without the risk of moisture building up inside. 
textile hangings, woven reed mats, fur coverings, and wooden slats. These were all pretty common interior surfaces for the Vikings. Each one, in its own way, added a microlayer of insulation to their homes. This whole approach, you see, solved a major problem that still bothers many small cabins even today. Moisture-laden air condensing inside the walls. It's a simple yet remarkably effective solution. By keeping insulation on the interior surface rather than hidden behind it, Vikings allowed walls to dry naturally while preserving warmth inside. In modern terms, this is the same principle behind thermal curtains, interior wooden panelling, and breathable insulation layers like wool or hemp fibre. To use this method today, install breathable, layered insulation on the inside of an outbuilding instead of sealing everything in plastic behind drywall. The room stays warm, but the wall cavity stays dry and rot-free. Ventilation was intentionally imprecise because, well, controlled leakage was actually part of the insulation system. A Viking house was not meant to be airtight. Some draft was intentional. Heat from a central fire pushed warm air upward and outward, drawing in fresh cold air from lower gaps where it mixed with interior warmth before circulating. This continuous exchange prevented moisture build-up and smoke stagnation. You know, modern off-grid builders often make the mistake of sealing tiny structures too tightly. This can lead to, well, condensation and mould, even in cold climates. It's a bit of a tricky balance, isn't it? To apply the Viking principle effectively, you need to ensure your building has a defined air path. A small gap near the floor on the wind-sheltered side, paired with a higher vent or window, allows the outward movement of rising warm air. It's quite a clever approach, really. The result, my friends, is a home or shop that stays warm without trapping moisture. And as we know, moisture is the enemy of long-term structural survival. It's all about finding that perfect balance, isn't it? Thermal stability came from the balance of mass and breathability, not from maximum insulation thickness. This is perhaps the most valuable takeaway. Viking insulation worked because the materials weren't dead layers. They breathed, held thermal mass, and regulated humidity. Today, you can achieve similar stability by combining mass-heavy materials such as stone or earth with breathable insulators like wool-straw-clay mixtures or wood fibre. So, a simple way to apply this on a small scale is to pack an interior wall with clay-coated straw, let it dry naturally, and then finish with thin wooden planks. It creates a wall that absorbs heat, resists mould, and insulates effectively. The Viking approach to insulation wasn't superstition or luck. It was, in fact, hard-earned engineering grounded in observation, climate adaptation, and materials that still outperform modern synthetic insulation in certain off-grid contexts. If this guide helped expand your understanding of historical building science, make sure you subscribe to Thermal Vault and share this video with anyone serious about resilient construction. The old ways still have lessons worth learning.